dirt track racing. Now, this is a sport that we all love, but it is no secret how tough it is, both mentally and physically. And with that, you can go from your highest of highs to your lowest of lows real quick and maybe even back. And for today's show, I want to share a story that I believe is a perfect example of this. So this story starts at the end of 2017. I was moving into the open division at the Red Bluff Outlaws and I was getting ready to take on my rookie season. For anyone who's never heard of the Red Bluff Outlaws, it is a small indoor dirt track located in Red Bluff, California at the local Tehama County Fairgrounds inside the Pauley Davis Pavilion. Now this is the birthplace of outlaw carts. Where it got started, they've been racing inside this building for the past 40 years. So much action has happened on this piece of property. And as I said I was moving into the open class which is the premier division of this winter series. Now each season the Red Bluff Outlaw schedule is very similar to the last. It's either 12 or 13 points races and they spread it out across five months with a couple of breaks in between. Now in those 12 points races they have three of those shows that are just a little bit more prestigious and bigger than the rest and one of those is the Tyler Wolf Memorial. Now Tyler Wolf was a five-time open winner at the Red Bluff Outlaws and was also the youngest ever 410 track champion at the Silver Dollar Speedway in Chico, which is just an hour up the road from Red Bluff. Now, unfortunately, Tyler passed away in a tragic accident at the Calistoga Speedway in 2012 in a sprint car, and ever since, the Red Bluff Outlaws has honored him with the Tyler Wolf Memorial, which typically takes place towards the beginning of the season. And for some reason, I'm not really sure why, but we have always had really, really good results throughout the years at this race. So that's kind of where this story takes place, and I want to get into the highs and lows of dirt track racing and it all starts at the 2017 Tyler Wolf Memorial where at the time I was chasing the biggest win of my life. Still going at it in the front of the field. Tanner Holmes not quite able to get alongside of him. This kid is something to watch for right here. Tanner Holmes all over a veteran. Tyler Stevie has been doing this for so long looking for his first career victory. Tanner Holmes in his rookie season is pushing around looking for his first career victory as well. Five laps to go in. Who's it going to be, the veteran or the rookie at the front of the field? They're going at it right now. Tyler CB so smooth around the bottom. Tyler CB trying to pay the tire bill on the bottom side. Tanner Holmes, he's selling some T-shirts up top behind them. It's three car lengths back to the 86 J. Jesse Caldwell. Three. Next time by two laps to go. Yeah, three laps to go, and they're side by side into turn number three. Tanner Holmes right there knocking on the door. Two laps to go. And Tanner Holmes spins around, backs in the wall, and the yellow flag comes out. Unbelievable. What, what a heartbreaker. I was just going to say, what a heartbreaker for Tanner Holmes. That kid absolutely putting on a show, running in the second spot. Every single time I watch that footage back, I still get like this nervous feeling of like, I think the outcome's always going to be different. And that's uh, that's still a race I think about to this day, just because it's one of those significant losses in my head. And it was all because of the circumstances. I was chasing my first open victory in my rookie season. I was racing with some of the best outlaw cart drivers in the nation. I was competing right there side by side with them. So we had both sides of the spectrum. We had some excitement with just how well things were going, but then and we had disappointment with just how things ended. So that's where I talk about the highs and lows. I was on this high point there, going in towards the final laps, looks like I was gonna win, and then I dropped down significantly when I spun out all on my own. So that is where the story begins in 2017, but that is definitely not where it ends. We kinda ended there on a low point, and we wanted to bounce back with some redemption in 2018. Nine laps to go, the lights are out. Chase Hill, Tanner Holmes, turn them loose once again. Tanner Holmes with a great start, slides in front of the one seed Chase Hill. Hill's gonna turn it back to the inside, but Holmes blocks the line. We come down at less than eight laps to go. A huge restart for Tanner Holmes. He gets the lead and now he's trying to drive away in the 18T. Holmes looking for his second career win in the open class as now he continues to pull away. That car is absolutely lights out tonight. The crew at QRC, Jimmy Ellers and the whole gang absolutely put the super tune on that thing right now as he is driving away from last year's runner-up in the point standings. White flag in the hand of flagman Johnny Miskell down the front straightaway one more time around Elijah. Tanner Holmes down the back straightaway. He's looking for the Tyler Wolf Memorial, Memorial title. He'll get it off at turn number four. Tanner Holmes is your winner. Chase Hill second. 
So we came back one year later, made a late race pass, drove away from the field, and then got the checkered flag first. And I just remember the feeling and the emotions of all of it, climbing on top of the wings, seeing the crowd. Also getting it done in a factory QRC house cart, that was a big part of it. So just everything was incredible. So the year before, you know, we dropped to this low, and now in 2018, we're back to like the highest of high points I've probably had in all my outlaw cart racing. And after that, it ended up being a pretty good season for us. We came home second in the points and now when the Tyler Wolf Memorial rolls back around again in 2019 we end up back on the struggle bus and miss the show and this one wasn't really necessarily our fault we qualified good we were looking to get through our heat race a car spun out in front of me it ripped my right front off then I wasn't able to get it changed in the hot pit so I went to the alphabet soup and was in the D main I won the D main event I was able to transfer through the C but then when I got to the B main it was just too much of a challenge things did not go my way and I did not transfer through into the big show. So if I wanted another shot at victory at this race, I was gonna have to wait another 365 days for it to roll around again in 2020. And I mean this, my confidence was at an all-time high. We were going into the 2020 Tyler Wolf Memorial. It was the first race of the season. And I legit thought I am gonna wax these guys. I was on my game. I knew exactly what I needed to do to get through the night and put myself in a good position to win. And that is exactly what ended up happening. We dominated the race we led most of the laps we were literally in our own zip code we were like two tenths faster than the rest of the field and here was the outcome from that event trying to grab two big wins in a row foster looks like he might be tracking down a little bit here yeah the last time around he took a tenth of a second off this time he takes another two tenths here he off. is the six car is there and we've got a race for the lead i think holmes might have a problem something is wrong on the 18t car and foster pushing him around the racetrack now he misses his marks right there and holmes gets away yeah, that was a big break there for Holmes, but that car, he's, there's something he, wrong. Yeah, he's got big time problems in the 18T. He's got 10 laps to try and nurse it home. The motor is laying down on the factory QRC 18T and the veteran, and there it goes. Foster runs him over, Schmitz to the outside. They race back to the stripe and Casey Schmitz will have the race lead. No, Foster gets him. Wow. So I can't remember too many times in my Red Bluff Outlaw career where I was as disappointed as I was after the 2020 Tyler Wolf Memorial. Like I said, we were in our own zip code and things just went south. The engine locked up, I was doing everything I could to try and keep it running and eventually it just decided to quit all on its own. And like I said, I mean, getting out of the car, my face, I didn't know what to say. And waking up the next morning, I just felt horrible. And I obviously felt this way because we had the wind sitting in our laps. So we went from a high point in 2018 to a low point and another low point in 2020 when it looked like it was going to be a really, really good night. But again, that is not where our story ends. Another 365 days go by and the 2021 Tyler Wolf Memorial rolls around. And well, if you guys didn't see it, this is how it went. Two laps to go for Holmes, just a couple more smooth laps for Tanner Holmes and he'll get it done off a of turn number four. The white flag is going to wave for Tanner Holmes. The 18T sees it first one more time around. The factory QRC, just incorporated number 18T at Tanner Holmes will come off at of turn number four and win the Tyler Wolf Memorial. Tanner Holmes gets the job done. Tyler CB in second, Colby Copeland third, Casey McLean fourth, and Jesse Caldwell fifth. Well, for the second time, we got that redemption that we were looking for from low to high to low to low, then back to a high moment. Now, I'm a huge stats guy, and that's why I love shooting videos like this. So to kind of break down some of the numbers, in the last five years, the 18T has sat on the front row of the Tyler Wolf Memorial aiming event four times. We've won it twice, and we should have won it four times, as you saw from the footage. But sometimes that is just how it goes. Now, I wanted this video to be an example of how dirt racing can be in any sport actually if you're going to be involved in something for a long time there's going to be highs and lows you're going to have phenomenal years you're going to have years where you struggle you're going to have races where you do really well you're going to have nights where you have big victories small victories you're going to have other nights where you wish you wouldn't even have went to the track so you just have to learn to take the good with the bad and also recognizing is sometimes you learn the most in your biggest losses for example the 2017 race i mean you guys saw me spin out but everything i did wrong in those 25 laps i learned from and it actually 
actually help me win more races in the future because I knew exactly what not to do. But that is my story for the day on the highs and lows of the sport that we love so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and we will see you all in the next video this weekend at the Roseburg Indoor. Deuces.